You for sure heard words shallow comparison and deep comparison inside JavaScript. And in this video you will fully learn what is the difference and when do we need what. So just to be on the same page, we have three different methods of comparison. First of all, we have a default comparison in JavaScript that is implemented inside language. Secondly, we have shallow comparison. This is just a custom function and we also have a deep comparison. So first of all, let's talk about default JavaScript comparison. Why it's not enough to just use a language? Actually, it is working completely fine with primitives. For example, here we have a variable a, which equals 1, and we have a variable b. Now we can write console log and compare here a equals b. And let's check what we have. I am reloading the page and as you can see in the console we are getting false, because actually we compare primitives by value, which means here 1 doesn't equal 2 and we are getting correct result, this is totally fine. But it's not fine when we are working with objects or arrays. For example here we have an object with name foo and here inside b we have an object with name foo. And actually we are comparing these objects and probably all developers want here to compare them by value. But when we are reloading the page you can see we are getting false, but actually these two objects are equal. But the problem is here that by default in JavaScript we are comparing objects and arrays by reference. What does it mean? We are checking if this specific object is referencing to the same data inside memory. And actually we have here A inside memory and B inside memory. So these are two different places inside memory and they don't have anything in common. And here is exactly the mistake that all people are doing. We have here const a and now we just say b equals a and we think that we copied all properties like object with name foo inside b. And actually here I will reload the page and as you can see we are getting true. And it is completely correct because actually here b does not exist in memory. It simply references the same data inside memory like a. This is why they are equal, but actually this is not what we want to achieve like a normal developers, we mostly want to compare our objects or arrays. For example, we have an object of the user and we want to compare it with another object, but we can't do it with native JavaScript comparison, this is why we are getting inside shallow comparison and deep comparison. First of all, let's create together shallow comparison function. And as you can see here, I have a function which is just a helper. We don't need to get deep inside of this function. Actually, this is just a helper where we can provide some value and inside we are getting back as a string our type. As you can see here inside browser, I can write type of and this is our function. And here I'm providing some string and we're getting back a correct data type. Now we're providing here our number. We're getting back number. If it is, for example, boolean, we're getting boolean and here for example we have an object a with field name as you can see we are getting object which means this function is working correctly and it will help us tremendously to build our function of shallow comparison. So let's create this function let's name it for example shallow compare and here we are providing first of all source and secondly target which actually means we simply provide two different properties and we want to compare them. What is the idea of shallow comparison, why it is better than plain JavaScript comparison and why it's not better than deep comparison? Actually the idea is that we want to fix our default JavaScript comparison but we don't want to lose our performance. Which means we are trying to fix objects and arrays but we want still to have some performance. When we are talking about deep comparison, it is the slowest method of comparison, but it is the most correct, because actually we just loop in recursively through the whole tree of like our object or array and we compare every single value. And it is really slow, but we are sure that we compared everything correctly. So our idea here inside shallow comparison is to write things fast. This is why first of all here we want to check for a type, because if we have different data type we don't need to do anything at all, we simply throw false. This is why here we can write if type of and here we are providing our source does not equal and here we have type of of our target, so we are comparing two types. Now we just return here false and we don't need to check anything else. The next step what we want to do here, we want to use a native plain JavaScript comparison, because it is working completely fine for our primitives. This is why here I will write return source equals and here we have our target, which means we wrote this line to compare primitives. 
Let's check if it's working. Here in browser, we can call our function shallow compare, and we are providing first of all, for example, false and one to check our type checking, and we are getting false. This is exactly this if condition. Secondly, we can compare, for example, one and one, and we are getting here true because this is just plain normal JavaScript condition. And now it's time to fix our objects and arrays. So first of all, let's try to implement arrays. This is why here we can check, okay, if type of source equals array, then we need to do our check. And you might ask why we are checking only source and not target, because actually inside this if previously, we checked the data type is the same, which actually means here not only the source equals array, but also target. And to make it fast, first of all, inside we want to check the length, because if we have the different length of the array, this means that they are not equal for sure. This is why here we can simply write if our source dot length does not equal target dot length, then we simply want to return false and we don't need to do any checks. But after this we must write some logic, because actually here we are checking our two arrays and they have the same length. This is why here we really want to loop through every single element and compare it with every element inside second array. This is why here we can write source.every, which means we are looping through every element of the array. Here we have access to our element and index, and we want here to compare our element, this is every single element of our source, and we are comparing it with target, and here is the index, because indexes are the same, which actually means this single liner compares that our arrays are equal. Let's check this out, I am reloading the page, here is our shallow compare, and we are calling here first of all array12, and here array12, and as you can see we are getting true, and our shallow comparison is working correctly. But here is a really important part, we used here plain JavaScript comparison, which actually means we compare all elements inside these arrays, just like in plain JavaScript, which means it is working fine with primitives like you saw here, but it won't work with objects, because we simply compare here objects and it won't give us the valid result. And this is completely fine for us, because here we are building shallow comparison, which means it must be fast, we can't really compare here arrays of objects we really must use shallow comparison only on simple types of data, and it really will work with arrays of primitives, but it won't work with arrays of objects. Now we need to cover our case with object, this is why here we can write else if, and here we are checking our type of, of the source, and here we want to check that it is an object. And when it is an object, then we want to do exactly the same what we did in our array. We want to check here every single value of our object and compare it with exactly the same value inside second object. This is why I can copy paste this line with every, and here we just need to change it a little bit. So instead of source here we can write object, keys, so we are getting all keys of our object, and we are calling it on every, here we have access to our key, so let's name it key, and here now we want to use our source key, and here we have our target key. So what we are doing here, we are getting here array of our keys of the object, for example we have an object A, B, C, now here we are looping through our array, this is just array of strings, and we are getting every single key. Now we are checking here the value of our object key and target key, so we simply compare our values, and again it is a plain JavaScript comparison, which means it won't work correctly for objects and arrays, and this is completely fine, because we are building shallow comparison. And the last thing that I want to compare here is dates, and it is really simple, we can simply check here, else if, and here we have type of, our source, and we want to check that this is date, and here then we want to compare to dates, and we can compare them by transforming the source with get time, so we are getting here milliseconds, so this is just a number, and we are comparing it with target.get time, so here we just compare it to numbers, and this is completely fine and this is really fast. So we successfully implemented our shallow comparison, let's check if it's working. So I am reloading here the page, let's check this out, shallow compare, we are providing here an object, for example a1, and here the object a1. And as you can see we are getting an error, cannot convert undefined to object, which means I wrote something not correctly, and actually I already see the problem, I forgot here to write source inside object keys. 
Let's reload the page and try again. I'm pasting shallow compare and now we're getting true. So as you can see, we successfully compared our two objects and actually they are referenced different parts inside memory, but our function is working correctly because we are comparing the values and not just the object. Now it's time to implement deep comparison and actually it will be super similar to our shallow comparison. The main difference is here that we are not simply checking the values with plain JavaScript comparison, but we are using here deep comparison recursively, which means when we are meeting the object, then we are calling deep comparison again on this object to really check all properties of this nested object. This is why here I won't completely to copy paste shallow compare because the code will be super similar. First of all, let's name this function, for example, deep compare, and we are getting to arguments source and target, this is completely fine. And here, first of all, we are checking for data type, this is also fine. Now we need to write the case for the array. So first of all, we are checking lens, this is also fine. And here we are leaving source every, because we want to loop through every element. But here we don't write just plain compare, we really need to call here deep compare. This is why here I want to call deep compare and I am providing here first of all our element and secondly target index. What this code is doing? We are looping through every single element of our array and for every element we are calling deep compare function, which actually means here for example we have our deep compare, this is our new function and we are providing inside array. And we are looping here through all elements of our source, so here we have one, two, which actually means here for one, we are calling deep compare again, and we are comparing this one with our target. So here we have one, two, and we are comparing it with deep compare with our target. Why it is important? Because here we are calling it recursively, which actually means here with numbers it is clear, it will be just plain comparison, but when we here have an object, then we will call it on the object again, which actually means we will provide recursively inside deep compare, not just a number but an object, and then we will go to our case with object and we will check object accordingly, which actually means our deep comparison will recursively check all properties of our nested objects race, doesn't matter how deep they are. Our next step is to compare objects, but actually here we can do one small improvement for our objects comparison, in both functions here exactly like we did with our arrays. First of all, before we do every on the object, we can check here the length of our keys, and if we are getting the different length, it means that our objects are different. This is why here we can simply write if, and here we are checking our object.keys of the source, and we are checking here length, does not equal, and here we are getting our object keys of our target. And here we also get length, which actually means here first of all we are checking the length of two arrays of the keys, and if our length is different then we are not doing anything, and here we can simply return false. And now I will copy paste this if condition to the second deep compare, because it is exactly the same. So here first of all we are checking the length of our object keys, if it is different then we are returning false, and now here we are doing our magic with object keys. And actually it is completely fine, but here for every single element we want also to call our deep compare function recursively, and inside we must provide our source key, and here we are providing target key. So we are comparing recursively every single property. And for the dates here we don't need to check anything, because it is staying the same. Now let's check if this code is working. I'm reloading the page, here is our deep compare, and now we want here to do something difficult, for example here we have an object with A, and it is also an object, so we must call here deep compare recursively. And here I have B1, and now let's do exactly the same, here we are writing A, with object with b equals 1, and as you can see here we got true, because deep compare is working correctly. But if I will try to use shallow compare on exactly the same data, we will get here false, because actually it is not working correctly with nested object. This is why you need to use these functions wisely, you want to use shallow comparison if you want to compare things fast, and you need to use deep comparison and you need to be aware that it is slower when you really need to compare some deeply nested values. And actually in your everyday work you should not build these functions on your own. You already have them inside some popular libraries like for example Lodash or Ramda, and you can simply use it from there. 
And also, if you are interested about learning side effects and pure function, I highly recommend you to check this video also.